Let's get some good vibes out in the air right now. I know it's only March, but hey, if you want the Falcons to make the 2023 playoffs and you don't want to see Atlanta golfing in January, but you want to see them kick an NFC ass, hit that thumbs up button and like today's video. What's going on, everyone? Welcome into Falcons Today by Chat Sports. Matthew Peterson here with some new information on the Falcons free agency front. Plus, we've got some interesting draft and trade rumors to get to. But first, this from the Atlanta Falcons themselves. You know it's interesting when Schefter doesn't even bother to tweet it out. Ready to Joe. So, the Falcons made a free agent signing. We're going to talk about that. But, uh, who is this? Like, just a very awkward tweet, I thought, ready to Joe, and no real context around it. I mean, we're going to break down the signing. It's Joe Gaziano. No, that is not the name of a New York Jets beat reporter. It is a former Northwestern Wildcat UDFA picked up by the Chargers and was signed by the Falcons. In his career, he has played 21 games, 22 tackles, one sack, two tackles for loss, and one pass breakup for the defensive lineman. So, Gaziano, he's going to fight to make this roster. And if he does, he's probably going to be a rotational piece. But by no means did the Falcons try and remedy their pass rush woes with this signing here. This is simply a lower-level signing to compete for a 53-man roster spot. Now, if we go back in time, his RAS, his Raw Relative Athletic Score, coming out of Northwestern in 2020, green is good. Red is bad. There's a good chunk of ketchup and mustard on there. Not a lot of relish. So do with that what you will, because personally, I had never heard of Joe Gaziano until I saw that tweet yesterday. No shame. So be honest with me. Have you ever heard of Joe Gaziano? Again, sounds like he's a part-time reporter for the Jets who puts out hit pieces on Zach Wilson, try and get some QB rumors and some clicks going in that department. But uh, hey, welcome to Atlanta. Wish you the best of success. And you know what? If you're the guy who gets the first double-digit sack season since Vic Beasley, I don't know. I'm going to have to go shoot down the hooch down in Atlanta for being wrong. Now we got some more Hopkins rumors on today's show. Heavy.com suggested the Falcons are the top destination for DeAndre Hopkins. So we've sort of graduated from the Falcons are a destination to, according to the fine folks at Heavy.com, the number one destination. Here's what Matt Lombardo wrote about. The Falcons have a very real opportunity to make, a very, signif to make very significant strides in the very winnable NFC South, presuming Atlanta figures out its quarterback situation in 2023. Whether it's Desmond Ritter, a first-round rookie, or a surprise splash signing Lamar Jackson, Atlanta checks many of the executives' boxes for Hopkins' next home. Drake London caught 72 passes for 866 yards with four touchdowns and is clearly the future of the position in Atlanta. However, adding Hopkins alongside London and tight end Kyle Pitts would create a formidable trio for whoever is behind center and a difficult vertical passing game for secondaries to defend. I'm actually going to agree with what Lombardo just said. Like, if Desmond Ritter's not the guy, then next year, if he's the starter, kind of goes up in smoke because if you don't have the guy at quarterback, unless Shanahan's your head coach, like, you're probably not going to be going very far. But if they could finally maximize Kyle Pitts and stop, happy, stop having him just on – crossing routes during play action, but get him and the quarterback to develop chemistry down the field, plus just Drake London being awesome existing in Atlanta. And then you add DeAndre Hopkins, who we know when he's going a full season, he's a top 10 receiver. He hasn't been there the last two years, but in 2020 when he played a full 16 games, 1,400 yards and six touchdowns. So you still got some juice left in the tank. And if Desmond Ritter is the guy... Man, I'm going to owe a lot of apologies for sure. But also, London, Hopkins, and Pitts with an up-and-coming quarterback and Ritter in this scenario? That would be something that no other team in the NFC South, no offense to Derek Carr, could really compete with if all those boxes are checked and everything starts to align. Now, Hopkins' contract, he's got two years left on it. Here's the base salary for each season. If Atlanta made a trade, that's what they would be taking on. 
Now, there's a good chance the Falcons will, excuse me, the Cardinals would pay a chunk of that base salary to help facilitate a trade. If you remember when Von Miller got traded from Denver to L.A., the Broncos actually paid all of his salary to get better draft picks. Similar for when Khalil Mack was traded to, uh, to L.A. from Chicago, the Bears paid a good chunk of his salary to get better draft picks in return. I'd expect the same for DeAndre Hopkins. So now it's time for you guys to beat Terry Fontenot and let me know. Would you trade for D-Hop? Type, D for type T for trade or P for pass. While you're letting me know in the comments section, I'm going to friendly remind you guys to subscribe if you have not already. We are so close to the next milestone here at the channel. So make sure to hit that sub button. Help us continue to grow. And in return, we get more studio space. and You guys get more Falcons content. Now, I'm not sure because I'm not sure if Desmond Ritter is the guy, right? You don't want to give up draft assets when you're not rebuilding, but you're definitely not in a win-now window to get a veteran receiver, have him two years left, but only discover in half of those two seasons you don't have the guy at quarterback, and he's just kind of standing on the sideline or standing downfield looking for a good pass, and then you got him for one more year after that, and you're like, well, that trade didn't work out because – we don't have a quarterback, and we traded for an expensive veteran receiver. But the wide receiver room in Atlanta, yeah, it could definitely use an upgrade. No offense to Matt Collins. He was really good last year for Vegas. But is Frank Darby and Matt Collins acceptable as your wide receiver two and three? I don't think so. They definitely will address this in the draft. But maybe a trade is also in order as well to bring some real veteran presence along. So the Falcons need to add a wide receiver. And D-Hop would definitely help Desmond Ritter, right? Giving him a blanket just to throw to in that general direction and going, ah, there's a good chance he'll come down with the football. That's going to help keep the offense on the field, move the chains, get some extra points. Plus, Drake London, he finally gets to get a, you know, a bit of a sigh of relief of, okay, they can't just double-team me every single week and take me out of the game. So is now the time to make this move, though? That is the question. If you think Desmond Ritter's the guy, then yeah, I do think so. If you have your concerns... Man, giving up draft picks to pay an expensive older wide receiver for a year, maybe two, doesn't seem like it's a very good, uh, smart move in my opinion. Now, what is a smart decision is getting the Falcons 2023 draft hats. So the NFL just released the official draft hat for this upcoming draft. I like him a lot, right? One, I think the Falcons one sort of looks like the Union Jack, right? The flag of Great Britain. I don't know. I just kind of see that from the middle. But Get them today, chatsports.com slash ATL hat. That link's in the comments and the description of today's show. Let's talk about the offense on the quarterback side of things here. So, could the Falcons be eyeing Anthony Richardson? So, Atlanta is going to meet with Florida quarterback or former Florida Gators quarterback Anthony Richardson in April. And don't look at this and think this means Atlanta's looking at quarterbacks. No, this means Atlanta is simply doing their job. You have a GM and scouts who are paid to work from the moment week 18 ends to the moment week one of the next year starts. This is their in-season. They definitely should be doing all the possible due diligence, due diligence possible. Now, when it comes to Anthony Richardson as a player, listen, I'm not a big fan, okay? I didn't think he was all that great last year in Florida. If you watch Florida games, I don't think anyone came away from that thinking, now that number 15 kid, that's a top, top 10 pick right there in the draft. Yes, he is an athletic freak with awesome size and speed and whatnot. But at the same time, like, for example, when you look at his RAS, there's a lot of green, right? That's good. Green is good. He is basically maxing out in a lot of departments. He is setting records. He is doing stuff no quarterback has done. I just don't think taking him makes a ton of sense because he's not a good quarterback, right? I've seen some people during the combine go, he could be the next Cam Newton. You know what? Cam Newton won a college football national championship. Anthony Richardson couldn't complete over 60% of his passes. There is a striking distance between those two right there. Does Richardson have the tools and raw skills to be a great quarterback? Sure. But you know what? There's a lot of guys who do super well at the combine that you never hear of again. Raise your hand if you remember when John Ross broke the 40-yard dash time, went top 10 for the Bengals. Now raise your hand if you have any idea where John Ross is. The point being is, 
I'm not paying or drafting people to play track and field in Atlanta. We're putting together a football team, and what I saw last year in Gainesville was not a franchise quarterback. The Falcons' QB room, it's a little light. <laughs> I mean, again, it, it's actually half glass full, half glass empty. You think Desmond Ritter's the guy? They've got a really strong room if Heineke's your backup. If you think Ritter's not your guy, Heineke's going to be a lot of fun coming off the bench and being the next Ryan Fitzpatrick. I don't think the Falcons would entertain taking a quarterback in the first round unless someone like C.J. Stroud, or I'll, I'll even include Bryce Young, miraculously starts to slip and fall. I'm thinking a more likely route for Atlanta is going, we're not picking top five. So we're not going to get our top two or three quarterbacks, most likely. Let's not force one at the end of the top 10 era. No, let's instead get a good football player. And if Desmond Ritter's not the guy, next year we go out and get Drake May or Caleb Williams. Now, the big question will be, does Terry Fontenot have a job next year if Ritter or whatever quarterback they go with this year is not the guy and they finish top five in the draft? Maybe Fonten will get a bit a bit worrisome and make a panic pick. But I think that would make more sense for the Falcons. Wait for next year if the quarterback isn't the guy this year because it's not like you're picking top five, top six anyway. So what position will the Falcons draft in the first round? I sure hope it's pass rusher. Defensive end, outside linebacker, however you want to call it, whatever it is, I want to get more pass rushers on this team. Let me know in the comments section. I appreciate everyone for tuning in, making us a part of your day. We'll sign off and let you enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. Thank you so much.